Okay, let's start off with section 29E, which is called the binomial distribution. Let's go ahead and take a look at flipping our unfair coin. Now, when we flipped our unfair coin, we want to go ahead and think about whether or not this is considered a binomial event or not. So first of all, with flipping the unfair coin, do we only have two outcomes? And sure enough, there's only two outcomes. One is a head, one is a tail. Are they independent events? So if I flip the coin now, and if I flip the coin later, do the outcomes actually affect each other? And the answer is no. So we know that they are independent events. Now, if I go ahead and repeat those events, are, is the event going to be the exact same every single time that I repeat it? And sure enough, it is because it's going to be the exact same unfair coin. So, being that we know that we have a binomial event, we can then go ahead and talk about calculating the probabilities. And we did this already in the chapter with regarding uh, of the chapter on probability, where we said that if we look at the expansion of p plus q to the n, where n represents the number of trials and p represents the probability of success, q represents the probability of failure, we can then go ahead and pinpoint which of these expansion values that we want to use in order to calculate a particular probability of the probability of a particular event, of a particular result. So let's say, for example, that we have uh, our particular unfair coin, and let's say that we're going to go ahead and flip this coin three times. Now, being that it is a binomial event, we can expand this, which is right here. We know that p plus q to the third is going to be that expansion there. Now, of course, being that we're talking about the distribution of the probabilities, we want to be able to calculate the probabilities of all of them based upon a value of the random, discrete random variable. So for our purposes here, let's just go ahead and say that h is going to be the number of heads. So that means then that if we wanted to calculate the probability of getting three heads, when flipping the coin three times, then we would have to use this part of the expansion to calculate that probability. So, let's be a little bit more specific here. We know that the probability of success and the probability of failure with regards to this particular event, we can say that the probability of P, being that we know we're having three heads, this has got to be the probability of a head. Okay? And that means as well that this Q has to be what would be considered the probability of getting a tail. <coughs> okay, so if we wanted to go ahead and calculate what P of H equals 3, we would just go ahead and calculate this using those values of P and Q, and we would come up with the probability. Now, we need to find out what all of those are, so that means then that if I wanted to find out the probability of h equaling 2, I would take this. If I wanted to find out the probability where h is equal to 1, I would calculate this. And if I wanted to find out the probability when h is equal to 0, I would calculate that. Now, hopefully you also recognize that there's a much faster way of doing this in the chapter that we studied regarding probability, and that was by using the choose function. Now, Let's go ahead and generalize then what that formula is in general. We say that the probability that for any discrete random variable x equaling x, or a little x in this case, we can go ahead and say that this is really going to be equal to n choose x. So in other words, how many times are you actually performing the experiment? Choose how many times you're actually getting that result. Multiplying it by p to the x and q to the n minus x. So if we go ahead and take a look at what this is here, if we were to use, let's use h in this case, if h is equal to 3, of course then we have 3 choose 3, then that's p to the third, q to the three minus three, which is zero. That gives us this value right here. And we could do the same for all of those there. So, 
In general, this is what's going to be very important for us to remember in terms of calculating the distribution, probability distribution table for any particular binomial event. Now, of course, there's going to be a much faster way of generating all of these values if you use your calculator. And if you want to go ahead and take a look at what function you need to use in your calculator, you need to, need, you need to use these. Or you need to use this. Okay. And let's go ahead and see if you can realize what the difference is between those two. Okay, so to wrap things up again, we've already discussed what it means for an event to be a binomial event. You need to check your three conditions. If it is, you can then go ahead and use your binomial expansion to go ahead and calculate what the distribution of those probabilities will be based upon the event, based upon the results. And you can also go ahead and use this formula here if you wish to go ahead and very easily pinpoint a particular probability for a particular value of your random variable. Okay, good luck everybody. See you next time. <coughs> calculate this